and welcome back to the National Blind Sports Week presented by Healthy Vision Association. Today we're talking blind soccer. We got a great panel of athletes, coaches, and officials lined up for you today. I'm Jaime Garzon, USA's blind soccer manager. I'll go ahead and introduce you to your panelists. Uh, panelists, give me a wave or a thumbs up when I say your name. We have Sky Arthur Banning. He's our referee representative. We have Kevin Brown, athlete, Bailey Martin, athlete, and Tim Taylor, uh, one of our coaches. Before we open up the floor to actually talk with our panelists, we're first going to answer the question, what is blind soccer? Um, and we're gonna play a video for you. Bill, I'm not sure if the sound system is working. I think we're going to give it a one more try. Otherwise, I can uh, describe the video. I apologize to everyone. Uh, we're having some difficulties with the sound. Uh, so we're gonna try it one more time. I think in order for sound to work for video, everyone has to put themselves on mute, I think. Well, I don't think the uh, sound's gonna be available, uh, but if you are watching this, if you go to our website, uh, you can watch the video of what is blind soccer. And I'm gonna describe a little bit about the game really quick. Uh, so the game is played uh, five aside. Uh, four of the uh, field players are visually impaired and the goalkeeper could be sighted. Um, the field dimensions is 20 meters by 40 meter, which is kind of like what a futsal core uh, dimensions are. And then the field is divided in three sections. We have the defensive section, the mid section, and the offensive section. Um, we have one coach that will handle the mid section. The goalkeeper who's actually uh, sighted 
can direct the defense and he can, can, can communicate with the defense when they're on the defensive quarter. And then we have a guide on the offense who actually stays behind the post and is actually coordinating the offense. So a little bit different than regular soccer where all the coaches are on the sideline. We only have one coach on the sideline who can only talk to the players while the ball is in that space. And then we have the goalkeeper who uh, leads the defense and then the guide who um, is on offense and he's communicating with the offensive players. Uh, the game is 20 minutes a half. And um, as I mentioned, four of the players are visually impaired um, and they do have eye shades while they're playing as well. Um, in, in a nutshell, it's 5v5, just like regular soccer it is, like just like regular soccer. One adaptation to the field are the sideboards. So on each side, there is a sideboard of about a meter and 10 on each side with a, um, a slide. Um, not sure what a, <laughs> a slight angle to it to a sideboard um, of 10, 10 degrees, I believe it is. And so the ball doesn't leave the court, it bounces back. And then the ball could leave the court at the end of the of the offense and defense. So if the ball leaves, um, they just have regular corner kicks as regular soccer, or there is a uh, the goalkeeper start starts the game again if 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 the offense team kicks the ball out of bounds. Um, we have two officials for each game. And, um, and I think that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple, uh, 20 by 40, five, five aside, and mutually impaired athletes uh, play the game. So we are gonna start with our uh, panelists. Um, and again, I apologize for uh, the sound for the video, but if you guys want to go to our website, click on Blind Soccer and what is Blind Soccer. The video is there for you to watch and it has a way better explanation than, 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 than what I just did. Um, it's very exciting. So uh, we're going to start with um, our panelists and um, we're going to start with Bailey, and she's going to share a little bit about herself and how did she find out about blind soccer. So hi, everyone. My name is Bailey Martin, and I'm from Iowa. So I first learned about blind soccer through Camp Abilities in Iowa, um, but I really didn't hear a lot more about it until last year's sports week, and I got really interested into it and wanted to learn more. So I reached out to Kevin Brown and just let him know, if anything pops up, let me know. I'd love to go to any camp about it. And sure enough, there is a camp in August that I got to go to, and it was so much fun. I learned so much about the sport, and I really think it has a lot of opportunities out there for people. All right. Thank you, Ailey. I appreciate that. And we have Kevin Brown, also an athlete representative. Kevin, I think you're muted. There you go. Sorry, thank you guys. Hello, my name is Kevin Brown. I'm from the Washington DC area. And I first actually learned about blind soccer uh, uh, over 20 years ago when I heard it was being played in South America. And Ironically, I was fascinated as a longtime soccer enthusiast, and I worked with the former uh, USABA uh, executive director to get information about the sport to try and uh, build the, the game here uh, in the Northeast uh, with the, the Pennsylvania Association of Blind Athletes. And so we would practice and scrimmage for about a summer long and unfortunately didn't grow the legs for sustainability. And so that was my first experience to to participating with blind soccer. And then almost 20 years later, I had the opportunity with a, a camp uh, and at the Maryland School for the Deaf and Blind, which uh, Tim Taylor was uh, supporting and had the opportunity to, to get that experience. And then later on, I was fortunate enough to, to play blind soccer with uh, Bailey Martin here on the panel. Thank you, Brown. Thank you, Kevin. And we're gonna talk to Tim, our coach, coach representative. Hi everyone. Um, I started 
doing, I've been teaching for about eight years now at schools for the blind and have done sighted soccer. And then I came to the Maryland school for the blind and my superintendent at the time um, came to the other PE teacher and myself and said, I just came back from Rio. Uh, I was talking to Mark Lucas and we want to do blind soccer. Do you want to do it? And my other PE teacher and I both looked at each other and I'm like, sure, I'll do it. So I was like, let's do this. Let's learn about it. So I did my best my first year. And then the second year, we worked with USABA to get at our school that first ever blind soccer camp in the US where I learned a lot that I've never knew was possible with blind soccer from uh, ISBA and from the, so Kevin was there. I think uh, Sky was there as well. And, um, and it just took off from there. So that was kind of my first ever real experience with doing official blind soccer. Thank you, Tim. Now we're gonna to talk to Sky, our referee representative. Hello everyone, I'm Sky Arthur Banning. I'm an associate professor at Clemson University, uh, but my role here is as an official. So I actually have been officiating sort of professional and semi-professional soccer for 25 plus years, um, but also attending a number of Paralympic games. And so I had uh, gone to a number of Paralympic games and actually in 2012 in London, had seen blind soccer and sort of came back to the U.S. and started inquiring about it then. Um, and in 2016, after I had officiated in the, the Paralympics in Rio, Brazil, as part of a CP soccer program, um, a lot of the times the soccer officials for both blind and, and seven, five aside and seven aside are in the same venues or, this, or we're close together. So just sort of continued that conversation with some of the, ref, the, the, the five aside referees and um, decided to write a grant. And we actually hosted a think tank at Clemson with um, USABA, with a number of folks, as well as some goalball athletes to just sort of discuss the process, bring in U.S. soccer, you know, who is going to be the national governing body. Um, and I think that really led to USABA taking things over, which led to the first camp at, at Tim's group and just sort of the ball continued to snowball, which has been really exciting to see. That's awesome. Well, now, Sky, that I have you here, uh, what will be the first thing that you will suggest for someone who is learning to play blind soccer? Yeah, so I, I would say try it, whether you have a visual impairment or not. Um, so my first suggestion is give it a try. And if you don't have um, the proper ball, then the, the next best thing, certainly not the best thing, but the next best thing is to you know, stick a stick a plastic bag or something around a ball and, and give it a try. Close your eyes, give it a kick, get a sense of it. And again, whether you've got a visual impairment or not, um, you at least can start to understand um, the skill and talent that Bailey and Kevin and other athletes like that have to be able to track the ball. Um, but for me, that's the that's the most exciting part is just trying to get everyone to give it a try and, and have that understanding that that football really is for all, um, not just for for, for particular people. Thank you, Sky. Uh, team, what would you wanna to add to, to that? How will, what will be the first uh, thing that you will suggest some more for someone who wants to uh, play blind soccer? Kind of going off of what uh, Sky saying is get a ball. If you don't have a blind soccer ball, that's okay. Um, there's, you can get just get a regular soccer ball. You can, like Sky said, put a plastic bag around it, uh, get a friend, um, get a family member and just get out and just start kicking the ball around, going out through open space, um, working on that, because that's, that's where you'll know if this is for me or not. Even if it's not a blind soccer ball, that's okay, or you don't have all the equipment, that's fine. Just get a ball, see what it's like, because I'm sure a lot of you, and uh, like myself, you know, I've never seen blind soccer before until, you know, five years ago, and getting out there, seeing the athletes, just getting a ball and just dribbling in the field is great. Um, and I've had athletes here at my school who've never done it before. And I'm just like, like Sky said, come out and try it. Just try it. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, that's okay. At least you learn and you tried something new. All right. Thank you, team. Thank you, Sky. And for our athletes, uh, Bailey, starting with you, where are the biggest challenges with learning to play blind soccer and what are some of the uh, fun parts uh, for playing the game as well? 
For me, definitely a challenge was learning to slow down. I have a tendency to just not really think about what I'm doing and just go for it, which doesn't always work out. So learning to slow down and process my next move is a big one. Um, The most exciting part is competing. I love to compete and also just being around people. I feel like we have such a great community and I felt like everyone really clicked at this last camp. And so it was a lot of fun getting to share that experience with everyone. That's awesome. Thank you. Kevin, uh, same question for you. What are biggest challenges learning the game and uh, what are some of the most fun parts of learning the game? Uh, thanks, Ami. I would say the biggest challenge right now really is exposure. And so through panels like this and, and the opportunities to these camps and, and what Tim's doing great in the community with the, the, the school for in Maryland is how do we get the information out there so people can learn that this is a game, uh, as Sky said, for everyone. Football can be for everyone. And so I think one of the biggest challenges in, in playing the game is making people aware of it. So what can we do to help that awareness? And I think the great thing about as soon as you present that level of awareness on, on a challenging perspective, it goes right to your next question. Everything's fun. It's a great game. Not only the speed of the game and the competition that Bailey just mentioned, but that teamwork and the camaraderie that it develops and how it builds so many other wonderful things, not just in the game of soccer, but in the game of life. Um, you know, I use the expression like, you know, you know, uh, soccer, touch the ball as much as you can. So get as many touches on the ball, uh, like in life, get as many, get engaged in life. Soccer is a great game to get engaged in. It creates so much fun and so many other opportunities for you in life. Once again, building on that teamwork and community uh, and the camaraderie. What a fun game. Thank you, Kevin. I think we all agree. Um, I wanted to ask Sky if he can share uh, one of his most memorable or exciting matches he's even, even have been part of or as a player, as a coach, or as a referee. So I, I'm going to have to have two answers for this one, Jaime. Um, so the, I'll start as a, as a spectator. And again, I, I had the incredible opportunity to be in, in Rio for the Paralympic Games. Um, and Brazil is routinely one of the best five-a-side programs in the country, in the world, rather. And uh, to watch you know, Brazil playing in their home stadium at the Paralympic Games and just to see the energy and excitement of, of blind football and, and a lot of people, I'm sure, seeing the game for the first time and, and trying to be quiet in the stands, which is just not normal, right? But the athletes have to be able to hear the ball and and then when someone scores, everyone gets so excited. And, and just that, that energy was really, really special to be able to take in as a spectator. Um, as an official, I'm, I'm, my officiating career in blind soccer is a very fresh one. Um, so I would have to say that the last camp we had in Colorado was perhaps the most intense uh, game with new players that many have never played or played very, very little, including Kevin and Bailey. Um, and sort of a, a true game environment with officials, you know, with, with teams, um, and just trying to, to match the intensity of the players, the energy, the excitement of, you know, we've been called into camp and uh, really enjoying that opportunity uh, to, to sort of put my skills into the game and, and let the athletes show their skills, which is, was a lot of fun. That's awesome. What about you, uh, team? Uh, that's tough. Um, maybe I have two answers as well. Sorry, Sky, I'm not copying you. Just kind of go with that. <laughs> um, I say probably number one would be in 2019. Uh, I've been working with my soccer athletes for about, uh, I'd say five, uh, three years or something. And they kept asking me, when are we playing a game? When are we going to play a game? And, and no one had a team. So it was just our kids playing each other. But Virginia School for the Blind had a team and they practiced that whole season and they came out uh, sometime, I think around this time, late October or early November, and they played our kids at our school. And it was just great because the, the kids, they came out, they had jerseys, they had the shin guards, you know, we had um, parents in the stands from the Virginia School for the Blind as well as Maryland School for the Blind. Our whole school was there, there was a mascot. Um, and it gives me chills just thinking about, you know, just building up to that momentum. I mean, it wasn't even an official game. It was just 
being a part of like what we called the first ever blind soccer game in America was just, was great. It was just amazing. And the kids still talk about the school. I still get people contact me. Oh, I saw your team did a game two years ago. And um, I just think that's amazing. So that's probably number one. And then number two, like Kevin said, um, our last camp in Colorado, which was in August, I think with having Sky and, and refs there and then having high level coaches um, with Coach Katie from Ohio and uh, uh, Georgie from New York, and then having athletes like Bailey and Kevin and um, come out and do just a couple days of training. And then we do a, a cumulative game at the end. Just seeing, like Kevin said, that high level. I mean, my athletes here, they're at high level, but, but they're at high level youth level, you know, so they're working, but to see, you know, Bailey, who's played for two days, get the ball and just sprint down the field, running through guys twice her size and just the intensity and the level, which just it gives me chills now talking about it too. Just great to see that. That was very memorable. So those two games were very memorable for me. That's awesome. I do remember that from Bailey. She was pretty fast. <laughs> What about you, Bailey? Uh, definitely would be at Colorado. I just loved it so much. I loved all the advice from the coaches. Um, the intensity of it was awesome. I'm a very competitive person. And so getting to be challenged by, like Tim said, like guys twice my size was great. They did not go easy on me, which I was thankful for. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. I also heard that uh, you had a chance to meet uh, um, someone in the soccer world. Yeah, uh, about a year and a half ago now, I got to meet Leo Messi. And so that was really cool. How was that? Did he, did he, was he aware of playing soccer? Yeah, he had played it with the team in Brazil or Spain, maybe. But he got a chance to play with them. And he was like, it was so eye-opening. <laughs> all right. All right. Kevin? Well, for me, it's it's a tie. Uh, for me, the best game, best memories for me is every game, every practice that I had the opportunity to coach my two boys and the local community and share the game of soccer that I love that's given me so much and to watch them blossom each and every time I was on the pitch and share in that experience. Every one of those thousand plus events is a tie. Wouldn't trade them for the world. That's awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Next questions for, for Sky and, and team. And I'll start with Sky. Um, Sky, where, where does the U.S. stack up in the world right now? And, and how do we get better at line soccer? How do we grow this sport? Where do we stack up in the world right now is, is, is we don't yet because we're still developing the team. And really that's the, that's the exciting part, both on the men's and the women's side is, is that development of, of, a, of a team, of a program. Um, so I think that's the, I mean, that's the, truly that's the challenge for us is, is to get a team together, both on the men's and the women's side Um, that can compete in tournaments that can start in, in sort of the, the four year cycle of the Paralympic game cycles. Um, I actually think the women might be better suited to jump in than the men are. And I only say that because the men are, have been competing for a number of years all around the world. Uh, the women in terms of blind football is a fairly new sport just in the last few years. And so I think that's, really exciting again for us to jump in and almost not be so far behind in terms of the development of the game. Um, how do we get better is, is that $25,000 question or whatever it is. Um, I think we, you know, certainly recruiting athletes. Um, I know that both Kevin and Bailey have come from other sports. And I think that's, that has to be something that we have to be thinking about is, you know, are there, Are there athletes with visual impairments that, that fit our classification criteria um, that might be interested in trying something else? Um, so, you know, goalball isn't the only sport for visual impairment in the world. And, and we need to see if we can recruit some of those high level athletes, those fit, agile, mobile athletes to the game of soccer. Um, and I think growing the sport really is, is coming from a whole bunch of pieces. And we chatted about potentially hosting um, a a camp 
at, um, at Virginia School for the Blind, I think, this coming summer, where we bring in all the PE teachers, so Tim and all his friends from all around the country, to, to a central location and teach them all, similar to sort of the experience that Tim had, teach them all blind soccer so that they can take it back to their really targeted audiences all around the country to sort of help grow the grassroots. So I think we're sort of looking at it from top down and bottom up to try and see what we can come up with in terms of, of, of a developmental model. Hope I didn't feel all of your thunder, Tim, but there you go. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, what should I say now? Um, <laughs> no, this guy's right. This guy's right on all those aspects. Um, where we stack up in the world of blind soccer, <sighs> for men, uh, we are towards the bottom. Be honest, we're at the bottom. We're novice. We're new. We don't. We're still learning. We don't know everything, and we're, we're learning. So we're on the bottom. I don't think we're the the bottom bottom. I think we could, you know, if we put a team together, we could handle some other countries, but we're definitely down, you know, we're, we're novice, we're new, we're learning, we're, we're at the youth level almost, you know, and uh, working our way up, you know, which is fine. Um, for the women's, I think, like Sky said, I think it's so new for the women's team and not having any visual classification requirements, I think puts us at a higher level because we can get the Baileys who have higher vision and um, you can have some people with lower vision and we can mix those teams up. And I think we can compete at the women's level at a high level right now. Um, and please don't be offended any of the, the gentlemen I've worked with over the years, um, but we just need to work harder. And I think to grow it, to make it you know, a sport in America, we need to get that team. We need to get that men's team for blind soccer in America. We need to get that women's team for blind soccer in America um, because the kids that I work with don't have anyone to look up to. You know, the big sports are goal ball, you know, track and field. The, the, the athletes are already at the Paralympic level and they look up to them like, oh, I want to be, you know, a goal ball athlete. I want to be a track star because they have names that are big. So if we can form that team that will help us develop at my level where I work with the youth. And I think that's important as well. Like Sky was saying that two, two tiered approach, working with youth, working with anyone who's part of youth soccer, not even just at the schools for the blind, you know, working with the communities and, U.S. soccer to get these because there's athletes out there who don't go to the school for the blind who are youth and they want to play and teaching and getting education out there and getting the word just saying hey we're here we're doing blind soccer and it's great and just getting that out there I think will help us grow the sport at that level and then it will eventually in you know years down the line we'll be looking back at this like wow you know it started from something really small and now it's grown into something really big. Yeah, and, and I think you 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 talk something that is is very important and it's about how we how anyone that wanna play the sport and, and is not involved with anything, how at this point, how do they get involved in the sport? And I think uh, obviously things are moving fast and we're having a panelist about blind soccer, we're having training camps and, and we're working with the uh, different schools for the blind around the country. Uh, but I think what you mentioned is, is right, Tim. I think it's going to be a, a, a soccer effort as a country and that involves U.S. soccer and U.S. youth soccer and the schools for the blind and, and everyone who loves the game uh, to get involved and, and, and let people know that uh, blind soccer is here and it's an opportunity for people with visual impairments to, to play the beautiful game. And that really these are athletes. They're functional we compete at the Paralympic level. Uh, right now, the, the blind, blind soccer is basically a, the, the brother of regular soccer on the Olympic side, but on the Paralympic side. And I think that's, that's, that's important to mention as well. Um, right now we're working on different initiatives to um, is, you know, partner with US youth soccer. And for example, where uh, there are regular clubs for soccer, you know, can they start teaching blind soccer with one or two or, or three athletes? Uh, can a coach, you know, receive all of our information and start teaching uh, someone, you know, how to play blind soccer? 
can we start working with the PE teachers at the school sort of line and, and start working with the kids and teaching them the game and 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 then obviously um, a lot of the weight will be on us to manage that and create those paths for us to identify those players and, and, and put them in front of you at a training center. That way you can select and work with them. And I think that's that's the key as we move forward. Um, I think my, my last question for all of you. So is, Jaime, I just, Jaime, yeah. can I, I just wanna, it, maybe it's a little challenge to, to club directors and, and I've chatted with state directors of, of US Youth Soccer to sort of, you know, they'll often say, well, we're, we're tapped out on our resources. You know, we're, we just, we've got so much going on. We're tapped out and, and, and I don't accept that as an answer anymore. I really don't because to me, you're not tapped out because you're not serving the entire body of folks that you could be serving. Right. And so again, that, maybe that's a little bit of a challenge to say, you know what, you're, if you're tapped out, then you need to be thinking about who you're not serving um, and figure out ways to make sure that, that you are serving them. And I think certainly blind soccer is, is one of those elements that, you know, we, you're, you're busy just isn't an excuse anymore. We're not serving all of the people for all of the folks. And we want to be able to do that. Right. And, and, and I think, um, you know, after a few conversations with U.S. soccer and U.S. youth soccer, I think we are on the same page that we want to be more inclusive and integrate everyone uh, as they are, as they are athletes to play the game. And, and as we move forward and we approach the state associations and the clubs, I think it will be an open conversation for them to say, you know, you know what in reality, like, you can have a staff member run a practice once a week for a group of athletes and you know it's not going to take a lot of your budget uh, soccer is the beautiful game because you can play with a ball and as you mentioned at the beginning of the uh, panel if you don't have a soccer ball a blind soccer ball you can put a bag on it and just play the game right um, so so I, as I think there is a huge opportunity for us to use those path and paths and to uh, start ID and 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 creating more more of a of a pool of players for us to pick for as we move forward. Um, but I guess the last question I have for you guys as as panelists is, uh, what are your goals when it comes to blind soccer? Sky, what what where, what are your goals for the next five years? Where do you think we should be in five years? If you if you had a a, a magic ball and you said you know in five years I want to be here and and I think the game could be here. Tim, did someone else want to go first so I don't steal everybody's thunder this time? But I'll go for I'm happy to go first. We'll, um, we'll, go, we'll go with Bailey. We'll go with okay. Bailey. Okay, all right. Um, right now I have two goals. One's a short-term and one's a long-term. Uh, my short-term goal is getting on a team and just getting better and working on different skills. And then my long-term goal is winning more than one Paralympic gold medal for soccer. All right, and I think Bailey, um, when I met you, I think I, I said to you, you're gonna be an ex Mia Ham of uh, blind soccer. Um, and sadly, you said, "Who's Mia Ham?" But uh, <laughs> but but I, I think googled that's, her. That's I know more stands. about her now. <laughs> well, th thank you. <laughs> what about you, Kevin? Uh, that's funny. Um, actually. Uh, Bailey, that just gives us an idea of our difference in age. I actually used to play with Mia Ham when she grew up here in the in my area, and then played it a year or two above, and we would compete against the women on occasion. So, a phenomenal player. Um, from a uh, kind of a, a goal for blind soccer, I, I, like Sky had indicated, I'd like to see it integrated into every community. Um, obviously, that's a goal, and I'd like to see that kind of the magic wand approach where it's available where anyone wants to play. And obviously, you know, you have some opportunities with the schools for the blind um, to integrate immediately. But how do we build it into youth soccer um, and how do we make it part of it? So uh, truly soccer is for, for everyone, that, that beautiful game you talk about. Um, so on a, a personal level for me, for the game, um, you know, certainly I want to be in the stands watching Bailey win a couple of those gold medals. Uh, but I hope to compete and and serve as, a, as a, maybe a mentor that, you know, this game can be played at a high level, uh, regardless of age, and stress the importance of, of that teamwork and communication in the game. Uh, so hopefully I can be a part of it, whether I'm cheering in the stands or, or on the pitch uh, practicing with Bailey. All right. 
Before I go with uh, Tim and Sky, I want to mention to our Facebook friends uh, that are watching live, if you guys have any questions for us, for the panelists, uh, you know, feel free to type in your question in the comments area and, and, and we will talk about it before we close the panel. Uh, we'll, we'll appreciate any feedback or if you have questions for any of us. Uh, Tim, where do, you say, where do you see a game in five years? Where do you see yourself? I was hoping to follow Sky so I can just copy his answer, but... Um... <laughs> but uh, I, you know, it, it's tough to think. Um, my one goal, of course, is to be part of U.S. blind soccer in some aspect, um, whether that's coaching or coaching education, um, something in that aspect. I want to be there. I want to. I want to. To be honest, I want to be on that 2028 team in Los Angeles. I want to walk through the opening ceremonies and be a part of that blind soccer team that we're going to field for that Paralympic games in 2028. So that is a goal I have set for myself to be either on the sideline or be a part of that organization that sends that team to the Paralympics in 2028. Um, for my school and my youth athletes, I want to continue to keep growing the sport. We started four years ago with four or five athletes and now we're up to 10 to 12 and it just keeps growing. And I want it to be a sport that everyone wants to play and um, get it out in the community. So this year we're going to have a semi uh, professional indoor team come play our kids. And then next year, um, hopefully with COVID being better, we can have, you know, a game with maybe a public school in the area, get the word out there, start working with the local school system, say, hey, our kids are here. They're the same age as you guys. They have the same abilities and capabilities you guys can do. We just have some modifications or ways to help us play just at the same level as you. Um, so build that. And then I said, I got, I got a couple, sorry. Um, <laughs> you, you can talk to Mrs. My wife and she knows I have these goals and but anyway, and then my third and final goal would probably be getting more schools for the blind on, on blind soccer. Because as I said, my kids ask me every year, when are we going to play a game? Who are we going to play? And my goal is to get at least in five years, let's go for five schools to have it. So every year have a new school, have a team that they're fielding that we all can play and then have that big tournament at the end of the season. But those are my personal goals. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, Tim. And Sky, we'll, what about you? Yeah, so I, I, for me, I think it's probably two-pronged again, just thinking programmatically. What's the, what's the program? You know, what are the program goals? I, I think for athletes, the, the very most exciting thing is that uh, you know, we're, if, if we have to qualify for Paralympic Games, we have to qualify against Brazil, Argentina, Mexico. I mean, some really strong blind soccer teams, but because we are hosting LA 2028, um, we get an automatic entry. And so uh, to me, that's just so exciting to be able to tell athletes that if you make this team and compete through that cycle, you will play in the Paralympic games. You know, we get a host nation bid. Um, and, and that is, that's something that just doesn't come along very often. And, and that just, that's, I think is so exciting as an athlete. It's so exciting as as a group of people trying to develop this program to know that, that we have an end goal. And obviously we don't want to have a team ready for 2028. We need to have a team ready probably for 2024 so that we can compete in that four-year cycle leading up to 2028. But um, just knowing that, that we will have a team in the games and, and it's our job to make sure we have a competitive team. Um, and, and that's really exciting. From a personal perspective, you know, I, I would love to be appointed to as a referee to some international tournaments, international competitions, so that I can gain some of that knowledge and experience and then bring it back to the US and help grow the referee side of the game. Um, I've got you know, MLS and USL and, and NCAA referees sending me emails all the time wanting to get involved in the game. Um, and so that's really exciting that we have kind of mainstream referees that actually want to, to, to contribute to, to the growth of, of blind football as well from the referee side of things. So obviously we need to, you know, if Tim's going to have five teams competing in five years, we need to have some good referees to support that. And so we want to make sure we've got a, a really nice development of referees again in each state to be able to support um, the programs that we hope are growing. Yeah, I think uh, 
you guys bring a, a good point and, and it really, um, you know, makes me realize that in order for this to happen, we can't just develop one side without the other. We got to move all the different sides at the same time. So we got to work in player development. We got to coach in education. How do we work with the schools for the blind? Uh, how do we work with our referees? Um, how do we support these programs that we, we hope to create at the cities, right? How would we make them uh, self-sufficient uh, for them to begin their own programs? Um, and and, 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 and uh, I think it all starts here. It all starts with uh, the players, the coaches, the administrators, and that we're all on the same page. We're pulling towards the same direction. And I think that's what's going to make a difference. Um, Sky, you bring a good point. Whether, whether you're ready or not, we're, we will be in LA and um, we're going to have a team there. Um, and how well we do there, it will depend on the work that we're doing, that we're doing right now. So I think we have enough time to, um, you know, to, to, to get ready and, and have a foundation for the game. Uh, but I'm excited as well. I think that uh, we have good partners in our country and we also have uh, great athletes and uh, we will find, we will find a, a way into, uh, into get to that stage. Uh, but as of right now, we're here, you know, and we can tell the world that we're here and we're coming. Um, and I think that's important as well. I think Bill had a comment on Facebook and I'm gonna open it up to Bill to see if, is it a question or a, or a comment, Bill? Yeah, we've had several nice comments on the, on the, on the chat from uh, David Brown, who has some ideas about, you know, spreading the word through uh, universities out in San Diego and Missouri School for the Blind. And then Ahmad Sharif wanted to shout out to Coach Tim, who we worked with at the San Diego camp. Ahmed said he's been uh, practicing blind soccer for the past three years in New York and, and kind of asks um, how we can develop the sport by having more camp. So maybe if you can address the idea of, you know, the, what, what it looks like in the future of getting some more camps around the country. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we're at a point where we're getting ready for 2022 and, and how do we plan that year? We've been waiting on certain dates from IPSA uh, for the Central American Championship tournament. And once we have that, I think we can have a plan uh, from there backwards of you know how many training centers we can have uh, for youth, male and female, and um, you know, in order to get there. So we're probably gonna post those as soon as possible on our website and let people know. Um, in, in, in how we're going to accomplish that. Um, do you guys have any comments, any remarks that you want to uh, say before we leave? Yeah, just kind of what Sky said in the beginning is if, if you are watching this and you are just like, wow, what is, that's blind soccer. Like Jaime said, check out videos, go on YouTube, type in blind soccer, blind football. Um, look at it, check it out, get a ball try even if you have a higher visual uh, vision uh, you know close your eyes I do that sometimes I get a ball I close my eyes I go out in the field and I just practice some of the skills so I get a feel for what my athletes are doing um, and if you are blind and visually impaired and you're watching this and you're not sure where to go uh, contact USABA um, there's Jaime is here he's our soccer manager you can reach out to me um, and we can help you try to figure out someone you can go to or an organization to work with to help, you know, get blind soccer started in your area. So um, that's just my comments. And I appreciate um, everyone for inviting me to come on as well and uh, sharing my, my story uh, with you. All right. Well, thank you to, um, thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, we're going to be, um, no, thank you to all our viewers on Facebook and those who submitted questions as well. Uh, I want to remember everyone that National Blind Sports Week presented by Healthy Vision Association continues tomorrow with Wellness Day. So stay tuned to the USABA social media channels for tips and discussions on recovery and general wellness. Also, don't forget, if you haven't signed up to attend the virtual USAWA Breakfast with Champions presented by Anton, uh, that takes place tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 a.m. Pacific. 
uh, Bill will drop the link in the comments below, um, as well as the video for what is blind soccer. And I, again, we, we apologize, we didn't have sound for that, but I think it's a very good video and, and you should probably want to check it out. And uh, thank you once again to all of our panelists and for you to join us on Facebook. And we'll see you tomorrow morning for Breakfast with Champions presented by Anthem.